Of all the edible mushrooms that you might find in deepest, darkest winter, this is one of the best of them. They also look lovely and bright against the otherwise drab tones of winter. It's called the velvet shank, also known as enoki or enokitake, though enokitake, as most people know it, is a Japanese cultivated mushroom which is genetically identical to what I'm looking at here, the velvet shank, but it looks very different. They look like white tufts of fungi because it's grown in a different way. It's obviously grown commercially, but it's grown in the dark, which produces a very different result than when they grow naturally in the wild. Velvet shank is what I call a winter specialist. You only really find it in winter. You might occasionally find it in late autumn, like November and possibly early spring, but certainly the most common months that I find it is December and even more so January and February. It loves the cold, being highly frost tolerant, and it can even survive being frozen solid for days. In fact, a freeze and then a thaw actually helps stimulate spore production. So it kind of needs cold weather, which is why it's generally a winter mushroom. So after freezing, it simply resumes growth when temperatures go above freezing. It's quite common and grows in large clumps or clusters, normally overlapping each other like this, and it grows on many types of dead or diseased deciduous trees like elm or ash, oak and willow, and also the stumps of those kind of trees too. This mushroom must be cooked before consumption, not because it's toxic raw, it's just that it's very tough and fibrous. So our digestive systems might find it quite difficult to digest if you ate it raw, you'd probably end up with tummy ache and that kind of thing. So cooking it not only breaks it up and makes it easy to digest it also actually enhances and brings out the flavors as well both the cap and stem can be eaten once they're cooked you might find that the stem on very mature specimens might be a bit too tough even when it is cooked so with very mature specimens i normally discard the stem but certainly with all the other mushrooms i eat both the cap and stem once it's cooked in terms of identifying it the cap starts out quite convex in shape and it flattens out with age the average width of a cap is around 10 centimeters and it's this orangey yellow color normally darker in the middle. It's smooth to touch and sometimes a bit slimy, especially in wet weather. Obviously it's dry at the moment, so these aren't slimy, but when it is slimy, the slime can almost be dripping off, but it's easily wiped or washed off. And the slime, apparently, I've never done this, but it apparently can even be used if you wanted to as a thickening agent for soups and sauces. But if the fungus is fried, the slime disappears anyway, even if you don't get rid of it. The gills, believe it or not, start out white when they're young, but they then go yellow with age. The gills are of differing lengths, with some not reaching the stem, and they aren't particularly crowded, I'd say they're quite widely spaced. The stem is light yellow in young specimens, but dark brown to almost black eventually in more mature specimens, and lighter in colour near the top. It has a velvety feel in mature specimens, which is probably where it gets its name the velvet shank from, of course. And in fact, its species name, Velutipas, means with velvet legs, and the genus name, Flamulina, translates to very small flame. And so its scientific name, Flamulina velutipes, kind of translates to very small flame with velvet legs. The average height of the mushroom is about three centimeters. The flesh is thin and quite light in color, almost like an off-whitish color with a yellowy tinge, though it does darken in more mature specimens to an orangey brown. It has a pleasant smell and the taste is quite mild, but very nice. It's quite sweet and mealy. And the spores, if you were to do a spore print, which I would highly recommend if you are new to Velvet Shank, are white. Technically, they're very slightly off-white, but they're basically white. Now for the toxic lookalikes. There's always a toxic lookalike, isn't there? The most serious toxic lookalike is the funeral bell. As the name suggests, that is deadly poisonous. However, the good news is this is not a mushroom you'd ever find in January or February, though some extra care is obviously needed if you're foraging for velvet shanks in November, as I have seen funeral bells as late as November. Funeral bells do normally grow on coniferous wood, but you can occasionally get them on deciduous wood as well. But as I said, in January, it's not really a problem. If you want any extra reassurance, though, even in January, the funeral bell will have a very clear ring or skirt on the stem, whereas the velvet shank will not have any kind of ring on the stem. That's one of the easiest ways to tell the difference, other than, of course, a spore print because the funeral bell spores will be rusty brown, completely different to the whitish spores of the velvet shank. The sulfur tuft is another poisonous mushroom, not deadly, but poisonous. That one can be found all year round, and it also grows out of wood, but the sulfur tuft will not have a black stem, and the gills will have a greenish tinge to them too, and the colour of the mushroom, especially on top, is more of a sulfur yellow colour. And again, if you do a spore print, you'll find that the spores of the sulfur tuft are a purpley brown colour. The common rust gill is another mushroom that could be confused for the velvet shank. It's normally found in autumn, but has been known to appear in January. It's generally classed as inedible, but there are some people who think it might be a bit poisonous but anyway the spores again of that mushroom are a rust color so again spore print is your friend there's plenty of resources online by the way if you're listening to me saying spore print and you don't know what i'm talking about it's quite easy to do anything else that could possibly be confused with a velvet shank and that are dangerous are very rare in january and will not have white
its spores. It is thought that the velvet shank, like a lot of mushrooms, has very powerful medicinal properties. It's even been found and proved that mushroom farmers who grow and eat anoki in Nagano have lower rates of cancer than elsewhere in Japan. And scientists have indeed confirmed that it has anti-cancer properties.